hear you breathe, but I can't see If you're right here next to me Something's wrong, wasn't it fun? Is it now we're done? You get dressed, I'm like a mess And you tell me Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I am doing a video about um, things that I wish I knew when, well before I turned um, 40. I am currently now 48. I just recently had a birthday a few days ago. Um, and this is just some information that I wish I knew going into my 40s. Some things that um, may happen to your body, some changes you may notice, um, some changes in, you know, your mental state, your hair, um, diet, things like that. Um, I, sorry guys, I previously recorded this before <clears throat> and please excuse me to anybody who viewed the previous video, but we had some copyright issues. So I am here redoing it again. So, <clears throat> pardon me guys. <clears throat> oh my, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, so let's just get into the video. So and if you see me looking, I'm looking down in my book because I did take notes um, of the things that I wanted to say and points that I wanted to drive home um, to you ladies and gents. Um, because I think it's really very important um, that we talk about what happens to us, what happens to our bodies when we get, <clears throat> oh my gosh, pardon me, when we get to be 40. And I feel like 40 is, prob is probably the halfway mark for us because um, my, I, you know, people are living up into their 80s, you know. Sometimes they're living into the 90s and if they live to be 100, God bless them because I should feel so lucky to get to be 100 years old. My grandmother now is 89 and she looks great. So I'm just going to say maybe 40 years old, between 40 and 45 perhaps, maybe is the midway point of us in our lives. Okay, that's just, just for reference sake, between 40 and 45, midway point. So the first thing I want to talk about, the thing that I noticed about myself personally, was that the loss of loss of moisture and elasticity in your skin. Now, elasticity means, you know, kind of like, it's almost like the firmness, like if, how well your skin springs back when you pinch it and touch it or when you poke it. Um, I did notice some changes, not a lot, but I did notice some changes, changes not with the elasticity or um, the spring back of my skin, it was the moisture level. I just felt extra dry and I had been feeling, well, not now because, you know, but I was feeling very dehydrated. My skin looked ashy. Um, didn't matter how much I tried to moisturize. Sorry guys, my phone is dinking. Um, didn't matter how much I tried to moisturize. It didn't help. Um, I just, you know, thought something was wrong with me. Um, but then I talked to my grandmother <clears throat> and my mom and they both said, well, you know, you're at that age where you're going to have to try different moisturizers and things like that, oils, butters, things like that to see what um, works best for your skin. Because <laughs> honey, I, what I realized is that I do not have the same skin that I had when I was in my 20s and in my 30s. No ma'am. No sir. I do not. We, none of us do. You can fool yourself if you want to, but none of us do. Our bodies have changed over time. Okay. You figure if you're 40 years old, your skin, your hair, everything, it's just as old as you are. I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. My hair, my skin, my teeth, all that is 48 years old. All of it. So I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just trying to warn you. Um, and one of the things that I just want to tell you guys is that search out, find those butters, lotions, creams, um, essential oils that will help hydrate your body because hydration is key to you 
you know, looking younger and feeling younger, feeling good about yourself. If you do not moisturize on a regular basis, you will get wrinkles. You will get wrinkles. You will. You will definitely get wrinkles. I moisturize twice a day. I moisturize in the morning when I take my morning shower and I moisturize in the evening when I take my evening shower. I'm gonna tell you something my grandmother told me. Come closer. She told me black don't crack. And she said, do you know why black don't crack? And I said, no. She said, because it moisturizes. We moisturize. I didn't mean to say it, but we moisturize. We have been taught to moisturize since we were small children. Moisturizing, I'm telling you. Ask any older person who does not look their age. They will tell you the key is moisturizing. Um, and I'm looking down at my notes, guys, just, just to make sure I'm on track. Um, and yeah, I, I, um, if you don't like lotions, then get yourself some extra virgin olive oil either some avocado oil or maybe coconut oil. And when you get out of the shower, you rub that into your skin. Pat, first of all, pat yourself dry and then rub some of that oil into your skin and allow it to seep in. You will be amazed at, at the difference. You, you, you truly will, you truly will. And I will say to exfoliation is key as well because if you do not get the dead skin off of your body, you're gonna look dry and scaly and I've been there and I am I'm, I am in love with the exfoliating gloves and exfoliating uh, uh, washcloths. I use them quite frequently. I, I know I use them not every time I shower but every other time I shower because honey you gotta get the dead skin off. Can't be looking cute and trying to you know give that youthful glow if your skin is dull. It's just facts, just facts. And I wanna talk about oral hygiene. Now, uh, it's very important because you're constantly talking to people. Well, nowadays we use, we're wearing the face mask, but um, oral hygiene is very important. You have to keep your teeth clean. You have to keep your gums healthy. You have to clean your tongue. Um, I would say what I noticed, I've always had pretty good teeth. Um, but due to my uh, condition, I have hypothyroidism. I lost three teeth. Now, for my teeth to be 48 years old, losing three of them is not bad because there are some people who have none. And, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. And, you know, I use a definitely use a whitening toothpaste because why? Your teeth are as old as you are. And they get dull, they get stained. Um, go a step further. Get some whitening strips, whiten your teeth. You know, a lot of times when your smile is pretty, when your smile is bright, you feel great about yourself. Um, and I will say, clean your tongue. That it is a must. It keeps down bacteria, it keeps down odor, all of that. And then once you've <laughs> done your teeth, clean your tongue, use a mouthwash that will further clean uh, your mouth. It will help to keep your gums healthy. It will clean your gums, all of that. Take it, swish it around, take it to the back, spit it out. You're done. There is never a good reason, never a good reason to not have great hygiene. I know sometimes we can get older and we just feel like, uh, I don't want to deal with it today. It's never, it's never a good idea <clears throat> not to have good uh, uh, hygiene, whether that is bathing or oral hygiene. It's just not. And guys, don't forget to floss. Just because we're older, you think we can skip flossing? Don't skip flossing. Floss your teeth. You'll thank me. Floss your teeth. <sighs> the next thing I noticed was my hair. Okay, so as you know, I'm a licensed hairstylist. I hate it. I'm a licensed cosmetologist, let me say that, because I do more than that. Um, but I noticed some changes in my own hair. They were not good. Um, I did not heed the warnings, so I did suffer um, from some hair loss. Uh, but once I got myself back on track, 
I started noticing that I the products that I used to use I could not I couldn't no longer use anymore because again my hair is older and um, it just needs more TLC it, it needs more moisture um, it needed me to be more gentler with it to use um, products that were um, not as harsh so um, I did go for five five or six months without coloring my hair because um, for some reason my scalp just was not uh, um, just wasn't just didn't want the color on it you know on it on the skin it just it was just a mess but I did discover new hair products some I had to create for myself and some I was able to to find at, at my, lo my local uh, Walmart or at my local hair store I was I will say this please remember that your hair is an extension of your skin and your body listen if your body is dry your skin is dry guess what else is going to be dry your hair so I suggest getting a really great sulfate free shampoo and conditioner I suggest um, deep deep conditioning your hair once or twice a week or if you're not able to do that at least do it once a week uh, if you're a person who only shampoos your hair twice a month then I suggest you do a hot oil treatment the first the first two weeks and then the, the, the next two weeks when you shampoo your hair do the deep conditioner because if not if you don't take great care of your hair you're not gonna have any people you, you just you're just not you're not going to have any hair and you know who wants to be hairless I mean truthfully truthfully I wait that's what I thought I, I'm just you know <sighs> ladies I would suggest trying protective styles um, I am currently now relaxed I was natural for for a couple of years I'm now relaxed again um, but what I have implemented is heatless or low heat styling my hair. I roll set my hair and then at nighttime I pin curl it. I oil my scalp. I keep my scalp hydrated. There are a lot of oils out here that you can use that are lightweight that you can use to oil your scalp. You know, there's just no excuse for not taking proper care of your hair or your body. It just isn't. Um, and I do suggest keeping your, please keep your scalp clean, keep your scalp clean. You know, it's very easy to fall into that slump where you just, you know, you go a month, a month and a half without shampooing your hair. That's not healthy for the scalp. Um, it's one thing if you're wearing a weave, um, then you, there are things that you can do to cleanse your scalp while you're in the weave. I'm going to make a, a separate video for that. I'm not going to go into that right now, but it's important that you keep your scalp clean at all times. Um, and another big thing I want to talk about is sunscreen. Sunscreen is very important, um, not only to fair people who have fair skin, but for people of color as well. I didn't, I did not realize how important it was until I was about 16 years old. I got really sunburned on a family trip to the beach and then I realized that my skin does not tolerate the sun's rays too well so I had to start wearing an SPF a sunscreen with a high SPF I wear a higher SPF now that I'm older because my skin requires it um, again sun damage ages the skin guys it ages you um if nobody ever told you that before i'm telling you now um you need to wear a higher spf the older you get because the skin tends to thin the older we get the top layer of skin it it begins to thin so we need to protect that so sunscreen is key um especially in the warmer months guys and um vitamins vitamins and supplements and prescriptions please please take your prescriptions as directed by your doctor 
don't play around with your prescriptions. Take them as directed, okay? That's it. That's it. Vitamins. Okay, you may not have needed to take vitamins in your 20s, probably not even in your 30s, but I'm, I'm telling you some good stuff. When you get into your 40s, you are going to need that extra nutrients that vitamins and supplements give you. Take a multivitamin. Um, take your D3, which is vitamin D, because a lot of us suffer from vitamin D deficiency. That is important. Not only is it important for your body, but it's also important for your mental. Um, take it. Take vitamin C because of what all that's going on out here, we need to, we need to, to, to really support and build our immune system. So vitamin C is very important. B5 and B12 are my best friends. B12 mainly because B12 gives me extra energy that I desperately need sometimes. And I chalk it up to being older, an older person as well. And I also chalk it up because of my disorder. Um, I need that boost of energy. It helps keep my metabolism up. So B12 is is B12 and B5 are very good. So I would suggest taking those if, and, and and calcium, 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 calcium with magnesium, or just calcium, uh, because nobody wants bad bone density, you know, rickets, any of that 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 stuff. So take your supplements, people. Take your supplements. Do do your research. Take your supplements. Talk to your doctor. Um, <laughs> oh, water, man, I can't even front on you. I, I don't, I do not like drinking water in, in the winter time. I want tea, stuff like that. I do not want water in the winter time. The most water I drink is in the spring, summer, and fall of the year. I, listen, listen, I just, if you're like me, I'm good if I get in 16 to 20 ounces of water a day in the wintertime. That's good. And I'm forcing it then. In the summertime, in the warmer months, in fall, no problem. I don't know what it is about wintertime. I just don't like to drink water, which is unacceptable, guys. You have to drink your water. Again, helps with digestion, helps keep your skin looking bright and hydrated and full and supple. The body needs it. The body is made up 80% water. You need it. Drink it. Drink it. You need it. It's just, it's no way around it. Just, just drink it. Drink it. As I tell myself, as I'm telling you, drink the water. Just drink it. And the diet. Oh, I got nerve to talk because anyways, that's either here nor there. Um, what I've noticed, <laughs> and you may notice or have been noticing that your taste buds are changing. Um, you don't want all that salty, sugary stuff. It's normal. It it happens. I asked my doctor why, and he says, as plain as could be, your body knows what it needs to keep you going. Sometimes we muff it up because we throw in extra stuff, sugars, fats, because it tastes so good. <laughs> it does. I'd be the first person to say it. I am bad at fighting against those urges for sugar and salty things. Uh, but I know that a balanced diet is necessary um, because we cannot eat the same things. We cannot eat the same way we did in our 20s and probably even in our 30s. We, we have to be better eating because if you eat junk, guess what? It's going to show. It's going to show in your face, in your skin, and your hair and your nails it's just gonna show so yeah you can't have that youthful appearance if you're eating junk food and you know and you're gonna be sluggish and it's just, it's just it's just not a good look it just isn't um same thing with exercise we have to exercise like have you ever started feeling these phantom pains you go to sleep one night and you feel great then you wake up the next morning and you feel like poop on a stick and not even a good stick you're achy, you're trying to figure out well, what the hell did I do? It did nothing. You did nothing. You went to sleep and you woke up. Progression of age. 
It's progression. It's the progression of aging. So what my suggestion would be, what I do, I get up in the morning and I stretch for about five or ten minutes just to loosen my body up. Because if not, I'm snap, crackling, and popping, standing, standing like a bag of chips all day long, all friggin' day long. And my bones are stiff. You know, five ten minutes of stretching in the morning helps you limber up, loosens up, and lubricates the joints. It's a no-brainer. And yeah, I, I, I'm on a slim, kind of slow diet. It's coming off, but it's coming off slow, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm working on it. I hope you're working on it too. You know, we have to, we have to do better with our 40 something year old bodies so we can be great fit and fabulous 50 year old bodies and, and, uh, and, and the next couple of years to come, because uh, you know, this is the only body we're going to get. This is the only hair we're going to get, the only skin we're going to get. We have to be much, much kinder to it because it is much older than it used to be. So, yeah, that is my advice to you guys. It really is. And like the last thing I want to talk to you guys is about your mental health. Um, I don't know where we've got and gotten in our minds that, you know, because we're grown ass people that we shouldn't. We should be able to handle any any and everything that comes our way. Listen, you're not Superman. You're not Superwoman. It's okay to wake up some days and not be with it. Because some days I'm not with it. You know, you wake up and you're in a bad mood. Or you wake up and you just don't feel so great. It's okay to say, okay, I'm having a bad day. It's not going to last forever. And I need some time to myself or I need a personal day for myself or I need a mental health break for myself. That's okay. It is definitely okay to take a break and take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the other people in your life. You cannot perform your job to the best of your ability. You, you, you're going to be just a mess and nobody wants that. You don't want that. I don't want that for you. And I know you don't want that for yourself. So it's okay to not be Superman or Superwoman all the time. I'm going to tell you what my best friend told me. Take the ass off your chest. Take your cape off. And just be okay with being you. It's okay. It's okay to take a time out for yourself. I do. And I hope you will too. I, I really hope that this talk that we had helps you and you know gives you some insight on you know what to come what what's to come if you're not 40 yet and to maybe shed some light on what is going on with you now that you are in your 40s and you think that you're going crazy <laughs> you're not going crazy it's plenty of us who are going through the exact same things guys you know i just you're not alone you're really not alone <laughs> that there are plenty of us who are out here who are going through these things and maybe we just don't say anything because we think you know it's just a us thing it's not it's a we thing it is definitely a we thing and I would love to talk to you guys about it so do me a favor leave some comments down below and you know let me know what things you've noticed um about you know you notice that happened to yourself once you got near your 40s or in your 40s and what you're doing to combat um the, those things you know it's okay to get older guys it's okay to go gray um it's okay to, you know if you have a couple of wrinkles on your face but know that you know there are things that you can do to combat them and you know growing old should be a graceful thing you know it doesn't have to be a painful thing you know Listen, <laughs> we're all going to get there at some point in time. Oh, let's just get there together. Let's get there safely and let's get and let's talk about it. So that's all I got for now. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Much love from Baltimore and be blessed, guys.